I'm Lynn. And I'm Leo. Welcome back to Yoga with Lynn and Leo. Yes, and welcome back to Fighting Infection. So we're going to go through a few poses today which are going to extend the abdomen. Hopefully you'll be able to use this sequence to ensure that your immune system stays nice and strong through the months when we get problems with infections, colds, coughs, all sorts of things go around. Yeah, just be kind to yourself and practice this sequence. So we're going to start, um, we talked a little bit in the last video that we did for building up the immunity. Uh, we talked a little bit about opening gateways. So when you're quite stiff in the lower back and the hips, this can become quite a problem. So we need to be more fluid so that we get access to the base of the spine. So we're lying in this supine action, softening the abdomen, we're going to lift one leg and hold on to the foot, the foot bone, if you're able to. Now, what you don't want to do is to yank and pull the leg <laughs> in this way, absolutely not. You have to see that it is a slow process of opening. So the main action here is to soften the inner thigh and soften the side of the pubic plate. That's what we call the area right at the base of the abdomen. So just see that when you're in this position, it's, a, it's an essential preparatory action to open those inner groins. And this is a very important action to encourage more mobility and flexibility in that area. That's quite a strong action. And coming to the other side, we're going to release this side and then come to the left side, holding on to the foot bone and then release it. So eventually these poses or these preparational stages come into much deeper actions, but this is the starting point to open the inner groin and the gateway. So go and see that you soften the abdomen and there's a gentle pull of the, the uh, foot bone down. But it's not an aggressive hammering action, just go with those pauses when the pause comes. Just be with that slight restriction until you let go of it and you can move the body a little more fluidly. Okay, and then release it. So we're going to come to a standing pose now, which involves taking the body weight in a certain way so that you can open these groins again. So we're coming for part Rakanasana. So have a brick and come to a standing position. So when we come for this pose today, we're going to be concentrating very much on the alignment. So jumping those legs apart. Now the legs are wider than Trikonasana. We practiced Trikonasana in our previous video. Turning the feet. So turning your left foot and your right foot out and coming up. So again, this is very important where you were just previously, working that groin. So this inner thigh now needs to become more exposed. And to become more exposed, you need to get more rotation in the thigh itself. It's a really challenging action. You have to bend the knee several times. And when we were talking about this in our previous video, we have to see that this area starts to rotate. So see that you pull up through the leg and lift up. Now, we're going to bend the knee, but you've got to keep this rotation going, bend the leg. Now, when you extend, the armpit needs to come to the knee. So lengthen, so if you've got a long spine, then this would be a nice, easy action. Yes, and then take the hand either to the brick or to the floor. So you can see here that Leo has no problem in taking her hand down to the floor. Now, this upper arm needs to go in front of the thigh and press to the thigh. And this outer hip needs to move in so you get the same action as your essential preparatory action previously or just in the previous pose. Putting your hand down onto your hip 
Now, it's not about so much rolling the shoulder, but to bring the whole of this area forward so that it comes in front of the thigh or towards the front of the thigh. Then extending the arm up, rotating and taking the arm over. So there's some strong adjustments going on there. Strong, strong adjustments. So it takes a bit of time to get this hip work and this opening. But these are fundamental poses that you need to be practicing on a regular basis. Draw the front body to back body and come up. Good. And then turn the feet face forward. And turn in the feet to your left side. So it's very difficult, as we were saying at the very beginning, when there's so much bacteria and different infections going around. So the best thing is prevention. So keep your practice going, keep rinsing the body and extending and lengthening and detoxing. So keeping strong in the legs and bending your front leg. And then see, can you lengthen all the way, the armpit all the way towards the knee and taking the hand down. Putting the hand onto the hip. Now again, you've got to see that you're getting that essential preparatory action, grounding into your back leg. We want to see that you're getting that rotation. We want to see that out hip moves in. All of these actions are so important, so strong, so, so strong. Extend the top arm up and take it over. Go and see front body to back body. Move that abdominal area to the, to the spine. And remember that essential preparatory action. Try and find that groin by moving that outer hip in very strongly. Take a breath in and come up with control. And turn your feet to face forward and bring the legs together. So in our standing position today, in our part back and so there was a slight twisting action of the torso. It wasn't actually twisting, it was just a realigning of the spine in a lateral way, which is going to hold us into really a good preparation for our next pose. You're going to need to chair for this pose. We're coming into Dwipada Vapruta Dandasana. So, if you have a yoga chair, then it can be very useful. If you're not, then you can, um, you can purchase them quite easily from your local um, supplier. Taking a mat on top of the chair. If you don't have a yoga chair, I'll just point out, if you don't have a yoga chair and you, you want to do this practice, you can use a dining chair or a kitchen chair um, as long as it's got a long seat, because you can come over it sideways. Yeah, you can go sideways on. Yes, that's true. We used to do that, actually, when we didn't have the yoga chairs. Yeah. Which is quite a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is, yes. All right. So, coming on to your chair in a moment. Well, before we come for the Dwipada, the Purita Dandas, and then we're going to come into a twisting action. So we're just putting our preparations here and Leo is going to sit on the chair, so outside of the chair, so that her right side is to the back of the chair, so you'll be able to see here. Yeah. So you can see Leo is sitting on the chair preparing for the twisting action of Bharavajasana. So Bharavajasana we practiced in the previous video for fighting infections, so you'll probably remember that. But on the chair, you have a fulcrum, which is a really very good way to work to get extension through the center of the spine. So turn towards back the chair and hold on to the chair bars and lift up through the center of the body. Now, it's really important that you extend up more than twisting. The upward action's got to come and then the twisting action will happen. You can see here. And the shoulders, as you can see, are in line. And just release the shoulders down and lift up through the chest. 
So you can practice this a few times on each side. We're just going to do the once on each side for today's sequencing. And release them and come to the other side. So sitting nice and tall. So be aware that when you're sitting on a chair, there is also a grounded element of sitting into your pelvis. So you have to see that your lower abdomen supports your spine so much. You lift up through the center of the body and then turn towards your chair. Breathe and turn. Yeah. So when you come to your first twist, just be there for a moment. Lift up again through the center of the body and then turn again. So this action comes really nicely and again it's a really good action to um, bring vitality into the spinal area and then release them. So we're going to come through the chair now. Now this is a little bit more demanding and challenging so I'll go through some of the instructions of positioning through the chair. So when you come through the chair and again, if you're using a dining room chair, it needs to have a wide base because then stiff, you don't sit through the chair, you, you're just coming lengthwise onto the seat. So when you're in this position, you're going to have the belt and you're going to place the belt around the thighs. Mm -hmm. Because we've got the bent legs here, there's lots of different ways you can work in, in this position. Okay, step in. But this will help to um, give you a little bit more support. The spine comes right to the end of the seat of the chair and you lift and you lengthen the soft tissue fiber towards the knee side and then go back. As you go back, hold on to the sides of the chair and then coil yourself over the end of the chair. So you can see here, we've got a bolster and we've got a blanket, which is works quite well for Leo, but quite often um, the head doesn't reach this far, so you have to see that you get a little bit more support. Now, where problems come into this pose is when we reach for the support behind us and we keep on going and we come into the lumbar spine. So what we want to do is to keep this curvature of the upper body. So when we come into the full action on the chair, we take the hands through the chair, as you can see Leo's going to do now, which will give you a little bit more of a fulcrum. So pull on the back end of the chair, press down into the feet, and then get this curvature of the spine. So this is Dweeva Prita Dandasana, Dweepada for Prita Dandasana. Um, quite often we will, in the classes, practice the pose with straight legs. But as it's a little bit difficult to film with that um, in the studio, then we're working with bent leg action. But be sure that you're keeping strong in the shins and grounding down into the feet and lifting out of the pelvis pulling on the back of the chair and getting the neck open. And of course, this is a very important area, the thyroid gland, keeping that area nice and open. And of course, with the chest open, you can work on your breath, on your breathing, and just settling the pose. You can be in this pose for five minutes or more even, depending on where you are in your practice. We're going to be coming out of this pose very soon um, because we're going to show you another pose very shortly. So if you want to stay in this pose, then of course you can. You can stop the video and um, continue a little bit later. All right, so taking the hands onto the back bar of the chair. Now, before you come up, I want you to walk your hands right up to the top of the chair. Even more, even more and pull on the top of the chair and come up, keeping the chest open. Now, that was fairly easy for Leo to be able to come up, but quite often the head is really, really heavy, so sometimes you have to hold the head to come back up. 
and then sit on the chair and just be there for a few moments, keeping the back nice and straight and strong. Keeping the chest nicely open. And just take a few breaths, just recover for a few moments, keeping the back straight, keeping the shoulders rolling back and down, breathing through your nostrils and becoming aware of that openness in your chest cavity. So whichever way you came into that pose, whether you were going across the seat of the chair or through the chair, then we're coming out of the position now. creaking chair today. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, I just need to hit the creaky one, so sorry about that. So our next pose now is Setabanda Savangasana on a bolster. So hopefully if you've got a bolster you can use it. If not, you can build up support with foam pads, um, yoga foam pads, or um, a couple of cushions, pillows. Pillow is quite good. Actually, I've always thought of a French pillow being quite good for yoga. Mm -hmm. You know, if you don't have a bolster. Yes. That makes nice and fun. But even um, folded blankets or towels would, would do it. Would do it, mm -hmm. yeah. So, this is a really nice way of working with set band. It's more of a remedial way, um, a restorative way. And then extending back along the bolster, just taking your time to lengthen through the front of the body. And again, Coiling the upper body over towards the floor side, lengthening the neck, and being in this really beautiful passive opening within the chest. If your shoulders do not reach the floor, then you can use a blanket underneath the shoulders, not the head. Just raise the floor level a little bit for your shoulders if there's stiffness there. And then straightening the legs, straightening the legs. So when you straighten the legs, I'm going to just introduce a brick here for Leo's feet so that she can put her feet on a height. Now you can use a couple of foam pads or um, any support really that's going to lift your heels off of the floor level. And the beauty of this pose is, again, you can stay in this pose for a little bit longer and concentrate on your breath. You have a beautiful opening in the chest, a length through the centre of the body, open at the diaphragm. So just let the facial features completely soften and release. And just be in this beautiful space, complete freedom in the upper body and chest. And just watching your breath for a few moments. So again, this pose can be practiced for longer. We're only going to stay in this pose for a few moments, but um, if you want to stay in it for a little bit longer, then do so. It's very important also to extend through the legs into the heels. So this is an important action and rolling the thighs in towards one another. Keeping the abdomen completely soft and relaxed. And now we're going to bend the legs and roll to the right side. So we're still going to need to have a little bit of height for our next action, which is going to be set a banter. No, it's not. Forget that. Pause. What's the matter with me tonight? We're, we're just cut back there. <laughs> which is going to be... Okay, I'll cut that. Our next pose is going to be Bhadakanasana, Supta Bhadakanasana, on the bolster. And letting yourself go back slowly. You can see how Leo is extended spine towards the bolster 
and then releasing the thighs and coming down. Letting the back of the head release down, rolling the shoulders and this is a beautiful way to open the lower abdominal area to let the whole of the front body move to the back body. And rest in this position for as long as you feel the benefit and the softness in the abdomen. So there isn't any time limit to this pose. You just need to settle and enjoy the freedom of the lower abdominal area. Keep the breath smooth and even. And again, if you want to stay in this pose a little bit longer than do so, we're going to, if you're following the sequence in, then you can straighten the legs for your Shavasana. So straighten the legs over the bolster. And finding that deep relaxation, softening around the facial features, between the eyebrows, around the hairline, release around the face, release around the mouth, the throat, releasing the shoulders, so letting the whole of the back body release deeper and deeper into the floor side. So we're going to leave you here in your Shavasana. So just stay very quietly and peacefully in complete relaxation. Namaste.